Like it or not, Ubuntu is still the face of desktop Linux. A lot of people might not know what Linux is exactly, although they will very likely have heard about Ubuntu. But in recent years, Ubuntu and Canonical, their parent company, have made a bunch of controversial decisions which didn't really go well with parts of the Linux community. So what can you do if you like the Ubuntu base, its package repos and tools, but you don't agree with the various decisions and changes Ubuntu and Canonical make? Well, you can use an Ubuntu based distro that doesn't follow every single decision Ubuntu makes. So today we'll look at the most interesting Ubuntu based distribution, so you can keep using what you know without using what you don't like. And what you will like is also this segue to our sponsor. This video is sponsored by Safing and their Portmaster app. Portmaster lets you monitor and control every connection your system or your applications make to the internet. And it also gives you a lot of tools to improve your security and privacy with built-in system-wide ad, tracker and malware blockers and a lot more. Portmaster is free of charge and it's fully open source, but if you want more features, they offer Portmaster Plus, which will give you the ability to record network history for each app or the whole system and data on the bandwidth used by each connection. And for even more privacy, they have Portmaster Pro, which will give you the SPN on top of that. That being a supercharged VPN that gives you multiple identities for every connection of every application. So, click the link in the description below and start taking control of your internet connection now. Okay, now why would you not just use Ubuntu and remove the things that you don't like in it? Generally, what people dislike about Ubuntu are the inclusion and, let's be frank, force feeding of Snap packages for desktop applications. There's also the proprietary backend of the Snap Store, the opt-out telemetry, and some questionable decisions over the years, like always trying to go their own way instead of working with the rest of the community. But these are pretty much details, right? You could always uninstall Snap, disable the telemetry, and decide to use the community developed tools instead of what Ubuntu is trying to push instead. Well, yes, you could, but that's just part of the story. If what you dislike is Canonical, the company behind Ubuntu, and their decisions, then disabling all of this doesn't really help. In recent years, Canonical has made some questionable moves, the most recent of which is grabbing back their LXD project and getting rid of every maintainer that wasn't an employee of Canonical. There's also their refusal to open up the store backend for snaps, which makes a lot of people distrust the format. There was also the old Amazon problem, where the Ubuntu desktop, by default, sent search queries to Amazon to return some products in the desktop itself, there were also some questionable trademark disputes and more. So basically what you might not like is the generic corporate side of Ubuntu, Canonical. It's a company and if you prefer your Linux distros to be community ran, then it might not fit the bill. So if you know how Ubuntu works, if you like the Debian packaging format apt as a package manager and the general tools and architecture of Ubuntu, then you might want to keep using that, but without the hassle of removing everything you don't want and without supporting the official product of a company you don't trust. So let's look at Ubuntu based distributions that offer a familiar environment, but get rid of everything you might not like. And we will begin by immediately lying as this one isn't Ubuntu based. It's actually the one Ubuntu is based on. It's Debian. If what you like about Ubuntu and what you want to keep using is apt, the package manager and the vast software repos, but you want a vanilla KDE or GNOME experience and none of the canonical projects and decisions, Debian might be a really solid bet. If you're an Ubuntu LTS user, Debian Stable will give you a similarly stable experience with older, well-tested packages and the vanilla version of all the desktops you want. And nothing prevents you from replicating the Ubuntu variant of the GNOME desktop by installing the Yaru theme and icons, the dock and desktop icons. If you're more of a non-LTS Ubuntu user, Debian testing might offer the experience you prefer. It's got more up-to-date packages with more risk of breakage though. It might be a little less stable than Ubuntu in some cases, as problems might not get fixed very quickly. And it is a rolling release. You will get continuous updates to the system without major version upgrades. 
Some people call Ubuntu Debian plus some BS, and while that's a pretty reductive way of looking at what Ubuntu does, if what you really want is just the apt repos and you don't want any of the canonical decisions, then Debian is actually a pretty good choice. Okay, now with that out of the way, let's look at some actually Ubuntu-based distributions. And we can't start this list without talking about Mint. Mint is based on the latest Ubuntu LTS and removes basically everything that makes Ubuntu, Ubuntu. Snaps aren't there, some apps that don't have a Debian package anymore in Ubuntu have one in Mint, like Chromium, and they don't use the GNOME desktop. You get Cinnamon, a desktop Mint developed themselves, once based on GNOME 3, but now pretty much its own thing. Now, since you also get access to Ubuntu's repos, you can always install the GNOME desktop and all the customization Ubuntu makes to it with the package Ubuntu GNOME Desktop. Or you can go with a generic section without all the Ubuntu stuff with the vanilla GNOME Desktop package. Basically, Mint can replicate the Ubuntu LTS experience without anything that you might not like from Ubuntu. And you also get an excellent suite of graphical tools that Mint developed to handle virtually anything you might want. Although if you're not an LTS user and you prefer intermediate Ubuntu releases, then Mint doesn't have that. One you might want to try is Rhino Linux. It's a relatively recent distro and it moves away from the Ubuntu template by being a rolling release. It doesn't give you major upgrades, it's always updated in the background, especially the Linux kernel and some important apps like Firefox. Rhino Linux doesn't use the GNOME desktop by default, it uses its own vision of XFCE that, let's be honest, feels a lot like modern GNOME, with an activities view that shows your virtual desktops and app windows and an app grid. If you prefer the Ubuntu desktop experience though, you still have access to it through the repos. You can use apt, but Rhino Linux also comes with a meta package manager called Rhino Package that lets you install Debian packages from the repos, flat packs, snaps, and it also lets you use Packstall, an equivalent to the Arch user repo for Ubuntu. Packstall is actually how Rhino Linux distributes updates to the Ubuntu base by grabbing stable snapshots of the current development release of Ubuntu. It is probably the biggest departure on this list from the normal Ubuntu model. And it's a relatively recent distro, so you might not trust it as much, but it definitely deserved a spot on this list because it's Ubuntu, but it does something different. Another Ubuntu-based distro that has a few cool tricks up its sleeve is PopOS. It used to have a new release for each new Ubuntu version, so you had the choice of an LTS or a more up-to-date version. But since System76, the developers of PopOS, are currently working on their own cosmic desktop that will not be GNOME-based, they have stuck to the latest Ubuntu LTS 22.04. If that's a problem for you, know that PopOS also has some updates on top of that base, notably for drivers and the Linux kernel. And it has some applications that are provided in their own repo, so you are not stuck on very old versions of important apps. They also have some interesting tweaks to the GNOME desktop. They offer a different experience with a dock by default, an app launcher, a specific theme, and auto-tiling features that let you switch from floating windows to a tiling window manager at the press of a button or with a keyboard shortcut. It's the distro System76 ships to their customers as they sell laptops and desktops with PopOS pre-installed, so it is well-maintained and tested. And of course, you don't need System76 hardware to run it. They remove snaps from the install and they ship with Flatpak and Flathub out of the box instead. If you are okay with an Ubuntu LTS base, but you still want to use something like GNOME, then PopOS is probably a very good choice. Now, whether they will update it to 24.04, the next Ubuntu LTS, or whether they will wait until their own cosmic desktop is developed, I don't quite know, but for now, it's still a pretty decent choice if you want to keep using Ubuntu, but you don't want to use Ubuntu. Now, if you're more of a KDE user, but Kubuntu doesn't really float your boat, then there's Tuxedo OS. It's a relatively new entry, but it offers something interesting. It's Ubuntu-based, with the latest KDE apps and desktop plucked straight from KDE Neon's repos. This means you get a semi-rolling release model, with access to the repos for Ubuntu's latest LTS version, plus some extra repos on top of that for more recent kernel and drivers, and some applications that need to be more up-to-date. 
Tuxedo OS is made by Tuxedo, unsurprisingly, a company that sells devices that run Linux out of the box. They are a sponsor of the channel. You can learn more about them if you wait until the end of the video. Now, what's really interesting is that this is the distro that they ship by default on their devices as well. So, you know, like Pop OS, it's well tested and well maintained. It is also the distribution I use to make this whole video, from writing the script to editing it. Compared to Kubuntu, you get the benefits of having the latest KD desktop and apps as soon as they're released, without needing a major version upgrade. But you do lose the intermediary releases. It's only giving you access to the LTS repos here. Compared to KD Neon, you get a more up-to-date kernel and drivers, and some extra repos for more up-to-date applications and you still get the semi-rolling release model that Neon has. It can be a very good compromise if you want the latest KD desktop and apps and you don't really mind having older packages in the repo since you also have Flathub and Flatpak enabled out of the box so you can get the latest versions of virtually every app. And now for a list of the distros I didn't really include and the reasons why. The first one is Zorian OS. While it is a good take on Ubuntu, being basically exactly Ubuntu LTS, but with a customized desktop, pre-made layouts, and support for virtually every packaging format out of the box, it is also based on Ubuntu 20.04 LTS and the Linux kernel 5.15. It might not be a problem for many people, but this space is more than three years old by now. And this means that if you want to get your apps or desktops from the Ubuntu repos, you're getting very, very old versions, older than the ones the current release of Debian Stable has. I personally think this doesn't make it suitable for a desktop, at least until they move to a newer base. If they did that, it would instantly make Zorin OS jump back to the top of my Ubuntu based distros list. But right now, it's just way too old for a desktop. The second one is Elementary OS. It's based on 22.04 LTS and it does have access to the full Ubuntu repos, but their added value is their desktop environment, Pantheon. While I personally think it's a really great option, it is also very, very opinionated, with defaults that won't fit everyone, including the removal of all Debian-based packages from their graphical app store, meaning that you can only install apps from the Elementary OS Flatpak remote by default, graphically, and Flathub apps if you add that yourself. To install any Debian packages, you will need to use the command line, and I am not sure that's what an Ubuntu user would be looking for. If that's not an issue for you, though, the experience is well worth a try. Elementary OS is a distro I absolutely love and I love what they're doing with Polish and their own desktop, but it is not for everyone. And then there are all the Ubuntu flavors. Sure, they are more Ubuntu than any other distro on this list, but they're also now constrained by Canonical's decisions, like preventing them from shipping another packaging format than Snap. Future decisions will probably also apply to these distros as well. So if you're leaving Ubuntu because of Canonical, they're probably not very suitable. And now you might have noticed a recurring theme. Most of these are based on Ubuntu LTS. And unfortunately, yes, that's the case. Most of these distros use the LTS base, probably because they're mostly community-based and porting all their tools, extensions, and utilities to a new base every six months is just too much work. It can still be a problem if you prefer using non-LTS versions of Ubuntu, at which point your best bet is probably to just use either one of the rolling variants presented in the video, like Tuxedo OS or Rhino Linux. Another option if you don't have a problem with Canonical as a company, but just with snaps and telemetry, is to keep using Ubuntu and just disable telemetry and remove all the snaps and install what you actually want to use. Just know that Ubuntu has clearly marked their future as being with snaps. So if you don't like that, you're probably better off leaving the train right now. But if what you want is a new computer, you can get on board our sponsor's train right now. Tuxedo makes laptops and desktops that run Linux out of the box. They're based in Germany, but they ship to most countries in the world. And they have a big range of devices 
that are made to support Linux. The hardware is specifically picked because it runs Linux really well. And if there were some kinks to iron out, they generally submit patches upstream so everyone can benefit from the improvements. They have a big range of devices that should cover every need and every price point from laptops to desktops to NUCs to gaming devices, whatever you want. And all their laptops can be opened, repaired and upgraded, including the RAM, the SSD, the battery and sometimes even the wireless card. All the devices are also very customizable in terms of the components, your logo on the lid of the laptop, your own custom keyboard layout, whatever you want. So if you need a new computer, you want to run Linux on it, and you want to support a company that actually contributes to Linux's development, then click the link in the description below and get yourself a Tuxedo PC. So thanks everyone for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't hesitate to like, to subscribe, to turn on notifications or to write a comment. And if you really enjoy the channel and you want to support it, there are plenty of links in the description below just for that. So thanks for watching and I guess you'll see me in the next one. Bye!